Book Hooks is exciting for us for a, uh, a few reasons. One is that I was a journalist for a long time. I wrote about uh, music and architecture and politics before we started The Flea and Smorgasburg. And so this is kind of me coming full circle, interviewing folks. Uh, but now, you know, since food is kind of my beat now, um, this is like, uh, you know, coming back to it as a journalist a bit. And I think it's quite fitting that our little series is starting um, not only with two nice Jewish boys who live in Brooklyn with Passover upon us, but also who are known as much for their books about cooking as for their turns in the restaurant kitchen. Everyone's thinking about food right now, it's the cool thing, and so this is the first one, and my hope is that, you know, this becomes a, a serious but fun conversation about food that's unique and different than uh, other places where you might hear about that kind of stuff. So I'm very proud to have Max and Eli Sussman aboard for the maiden voyage of book hooks. We've loved Greenlight Bookstore and Fort Green for a long time uh, as a customer, and we've uh, worked with them at the markets uh, over the years, and so it's really a nice way to evolve that partnership. We're always super bummed out when people say to us, yeah, I've got your cookbook on our, my coffee table, because that pretty much means that they've never ever used it in the kitchen, and we approach our cookbooks by saying, every single recipe needs to be able to be made in the home kitchen without four days of prep and scouring the earth for the ingredients. Yep. One of my goals personally is just to um, create a format for um, public events like this that um, feature people that uh, crowds are interested in and keep it interesting and lively and talk about things that people actually want to hear about. One thread that I noticed when I was reading a lot in the last few days was um, family dinner. We were required to be home for dinner like six nights a week, yeah. uh, which was especially hard in high school, like on a Friday night, you eat dinner at seven o'clock, all your friends are out, you're sitting there like Shabbat dinner and you're like, finish up the prayers, let's get to the food, oh my God. Like, it's funny that we hated it so much at the time and then at, at this point it's literally like one of the main things that kind of help make us who we are. Everyone's going to get a chicken liver mousse on a toast with macerated blackberries and a, um, this kind of cool uh, old-fashioned um, Belgian red ale. Acquiring something good, not manipulating it too much, doing it yourself and in moderation and then you're not the most unhealthy person in the world. You know? <laughs> yep. I think also um, you know, philosophy of like how we write recipes and decide what's supposed to go in the book or not. Um, we basically buy all the ingredients for recipe testing yep. at pretty much, 90% of them at like normal grocery stores. Really the best part about it is that you get to eat some of the food that's in the book. The vegetables are becoming sort of cool right now, but I think Middle Eastern food sort of does salad the best in the world. And um, you guys seem to appreciate a good salad. You're right, right. Middle Eastern food is pretty healthy and it uses a lot of roasted vegetables and fresh vegetables um, and we love cooking that way. It's awesome to just get in good stuff and not have to mess around with it too much. I really want to talk to these guys about when they were chefs at their camp kitchen when they were in high school. That was the first time they ever cooked together. So we went to this summer camp and Max was asked to run the kitchen and I sort of tagged along pretty much to work in the kitchen and we got there and we found a freezer, a chest freezer filled with uh, frozen foods. And Max said, we're gonna cook this stuff today and then we're never gonna reorder any of this stuff ever again. And we're gonna get vegetables and we're gonna cut them and we're gonna roast them. It, it fit the camp very well, but in terms of how the kitchen had been run, this was like a mind-blowing proposition. Like, you're gonna cook from scratch every single day for 210 people, three meals a day, and we cooked Indian food from wow. kids, we made naan, we made pizzas every single week, we cooked bread on Shabbat every single week. It was really stupid. And the one time over the summer that the health inspector comes to check out the camp, <laughs> I was standing over a huge cauldron, a pot of something boiling, and I was wearing flip-flops, a bathing suit, and no shirt. And she walked in and she went, no. She's like, I'm gonna, She's like, put, I'm gonna walk out, please put on way more clothes and I'm gonna walk, and I'm gonna walk back in. So. It's great for Bergen to sort of put ourselves on the map as a destination for events around food and drinking. There's a TV dinner chapter that I'm great. super pumped about. Yep. Uh, so what we did was, and you know, we didn't really eat a lot of TV dinners growing up, so what we did was we went to the grocery store and stood in the frozen food aisle and looked at what the offerings were. And then we basically very, roughly used that as an outline and then went 
further. So some things are like yep. very applicable and you, you'll be able to immediately draw where it's coming from. Other things are a bit more of a stretch. Yeah, you know, it's really just a way to bring new folks out here to Crown Heights um, and, you know, um, meet some uh, cool people making food. So the Grana Slam of breakfast, please discuss. And so what we conceptualized here is pretty much like if you would go to Denny's and be like, give me everything, right? And then you would make it into a sandwich. So it's waffles, sausage, eggs, uh, bacon, compote, bacon, bacon. And then, it, and then there's, a, there's a picture of me eating it. We made it and I, and I ate it. And let me tell you, it is way better than it looks. So it's like a little bit ridiculous, but honestly, you could make that. And so I hope that they'll walk away sort of, you know, they'll have the book in their hands, but they'll know something more about the backstory.